Uh, Joe Bond reports live. I am here at Shep's Mound, which is a location that surrounds the international airport and domestic airport in Sydney. Now it's pretty exciting for me because I'm a bit of a plane spotter and there's a plane just taken off and there's planes landing. But I wanted to just give you a quick rundown of a few things. This is where the first people of Sydney landed. For tens of thousands of years, Aboriginals lived here and managed the land around Botany Bay and the Cooks River Valley, living off plentiful supply of marine life and vegetation. See, Connors has just landed. Sorry to interrupt, that's very important. Uh, Aboriginal people continued to live along the river after the arrival of the Europeans in 1770, fishing its waters, camping along the riverbanks. During the 1800s, well-known warriors, Pemulway and his son, Tedbury, were also associated with this area. Okay, Joseph Hammond, the first flight. The early 1900s were a time of great excitement for the emerging aviation industry. Crowds turning out in huge numbers to observe the first flight. 19th century industry saw the area go from early colonial times to a wool mill. Um, then it became a flour mill, a swamp and a park. Nigel Love was the founder of Sydney Airport. I never knew that. It's fascinating. He was Flying Corps Officer Nigel Love, returned from World War I. He was eager to continue his association with the aviation industry. Fascinating. I never knew that. Now, Charles Kingford Smith, this area, this international airport is called Sir Charles Kingford Smith, named after him. Charles Ulm and Nancy Bird Walton are also featured in this area quite significantly. Okay, Charles Kingford Smith and Charles Ulm took off from Oakland, California in their Fokker Tri motor aircraft named the Southern Cross. And Harry Lyon was their navigator, while James Warner was the radio operator. Took over 83 hours of flying time and landed in Brisbane in June 9th, 1928. And flying to Sydney the following day, the crowd that greeted the Southern Cross at the Mascot Airport was reported as being the greatest ever gathering Sydney siders in one place at the time. Sydney Airport was also where Australian Women's Pilots Association founder Nancy Bird Walton studied at the Kingsford Smith Flying School in the 1930s. Interestingly enough, the second Sydney airport is going to be called the Nancy Bird Walton Airport. Okay, I'll see there's another plane taken off. Love it. Love me a good plane, it's a virgin. Okay, Qantas Boeing 707 jet flies to Sydney. 1924, a permanent hangar replaces the airport's first canvas hangar. Get off the dog. Jeez. All right, international flights from Sydney began in 1938 with the first flight operated by Dutch airline KLM between Sydney and London. That took eight antagonizing days. I forgot, you forgot this part. Jeez, I haven't got this, mate. And uh, the next generation of aircraft to arrive at the Kingsford Smith Airport, Sydney is, oh, there's an A380. Whoa. It's just landed. Oh, you're Jack I know, mate. Oh. Um. A380, just said Qantas just landed and just taken off. It's Jetstar. Okay, the 21st century saw the arrival of the world's next generation of aircraft. These aircraft are quieter, cleaner and more fuel efficient than any other flown previously and heralded as a new passenger comfort. 2007 Sydney Airport hosted the world's first ever commercial Airbus A380 operated by Singapore Airlines followed by the first ever Boeing 787 Dreamliner arriving in Sydney just four years later in 2011. <sighs> Pump this hour of the morning. Joe Bond reporting live at the airport.